Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome, welcome, I'm Sinister, I always return to your hand, and today I've got something super extra special. You guys saw the thumbnail, and I'm not a super big fan of spellbooks, because one time they printed that card that was just way too broken. But today, I have a challenge video, and the rules of the card game is only High Priestess may attack, any monster may defend, all duelists must be defeated, increased card drops and speed-ups may be used, and... No save states until the final six. Check out the Summon Skull and the Red X, and let's see how many resets we get today. I'm going to see if I can beat Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories using only High Priestess of Prophecy. So we're off against Taya number one. Now first, let me explain. The only way that we make High Priestess of Prophecy is a Fairy and a Spellcaster. And we have very minimal of both of these in our deck. So we are not starting off well at all. We are on the back foot against Taya. And she actually has things that can beat us down. She has quite a few monsters on the board. And we draw into an Unhappy Girl. I remember the Unhappy Man from Yu-Gi-Oh! Eternal Duel of Soul. When you attack into it, the monster can't attack. I forget if it's for the remainder of the duel or for a couple of turns or whatever. Even though Priestess is totally feminine, Electro Whip does not work at all, so no smacking things around with the Electrical Whip of Power. And we just have one High Priestess of Prophecy and a useless Gus Fan. We do get into a stop defense, which allows us to take out the Air Marmot of Nefariousness. And soon after that, she does get a Red Medicine, and we do get another High Priestess, and we get over that battle pretty well. First try. So now we're going to go into Villager number one. Now... Maybe I forget exactly how you trigger the Simon fight, but if I remember correctly, if you trigger the Simon fight at the very beginning, you have to go to your room and then it cut, starts the whole cut sequence with Haishin and you don't get to duel anybody. So there is a way, I'm sure, to duel Taya, Joey, and everybody in the duel ground while also alongside being able to fight against Simon. We're going to go ahead and add an invisible wire and a no couple no materials. No materials are nice because they are fairies. I believe we started with two spellcasters and one fairy, if I'm not mistaken. So that gives us three fairies and a couple of spellcasters. And we popped off an invisible wire. By the way, I am using a really nice card drop with it, but unfortunately I cannot share the link. So here's the public link down below in the description if you want to check out You Get Forbidden Memories Arranged. Additionally, we're going to get into it a little bit later, but there is some cool competitive changes that you get Forbidden Memories arranged as opposed to Vanilla Forbidden Memories, and we'll get into that pretty soon. Anyway, Villager One makes a Shire on the Mage. We already have a lovely lady on the field. Uh, we're going to fuse a bunch of cards. Now, remember, I can't attack with any card that I make. However, I may place any card in attack mode as long as I don't trigger an attack with it, and I also may defend with absolutely anything. And that's going to come in clutch later. We do finally draw into a marsh, a, a spellcaster, a dryad, rather, to add to our marshmallow that's on the field to make a second, second level of lady. As we then Raigeki for the win, smack with one of the two level ladies and knock him out. So now we're going to go into villager number two. By the way, guys, I've actually never, ever done anything like this in a long-form content creation. So let me know. What you think down in the comment section down below, and if you are enjoying the type of older Yu-Gi-Oh! content that we post on the channel, please do me a favor and uh, place that subscribe button in attack mode. Alright, so you're going to be noticing as I go through this, I am going to be editing the deck some. We got some Dory Autos, Injection Fairy, Lily Effect Failure, Magician of Faith, and Witch's Apprentice. We got some extra Spellcasters to add to the deck. We've got a lot of cards in this deck currently in the starter deck that we really can't use at all. Things like Canyon, things that are just not going to be helpful in any way, shape, or form for what we're trying to do. Also, while I'm thinking about it, I've got two other runs in mind just while I'm already starting this one. I'd like to do a Tierra only run. Uh, we'll get into that later on when we get into the later part of the game. We'll talk about Tierra. Uh, it's one of the really cool changes. That and Navita are two of the really, really cool changes uh, when I talk about competitive forbidden memories as opposed to competitive arranged. Arranged adds a lot of 3,500 mo monsters and takes out Gate Guardian. So there's like a middle ground play where you can both fuse into those monsters, but also get them and equip them. So it gives a lot of really cool variants as opposed to regular vanilla forbidden memories. This hand is absolutely awful. The only good thing about it was two good things. I have a Yami, and I do have the uh, startup to a High Priestess of Prophecy. But he fuses into Mobius the Frost Monarch, 
And he's not having any of that, but that's fine. Because High Priestess is 3,000, so we can get over Mobius and finish off that attack phase. And then we're going to draw into another set. Cool. Another fairy and another spellcaster. And there's a second lovely lady on the field. And you guys know what happens. you got to have two lovely ladies. They both got to attack, and they end their turn. We do not have anything here, but we do have a stop defense that we top-decked into. I say top-decked, but... Pretty much throw away cards and get five. Two lovely ladies finish off the game. We get a warrior lady of the wasteland as our main drop. On to the third villager. <laughs> That's funny. Sinister Serpent, always return to your hand. Fuse it on the first turn into Gizmek and then to Cyber Dinosaur. And then we pull into two spellcasters and a fairy so we can make a, you already guessed it, a high priestess of prophecy. Priestess can't talk. Sorry. God bless America. A uh, Baba Bayoon. Man, I remember when Baba Bayoon was actually used with Sylvans. I actually played really, really hardcore Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the time of Sylvans when I played Heretic Ruler. Uh, at the time, me and the wife actually both played, and we were both trying to... We only had a couple of the Gaia Exceed Fusion Monster, the Exceed Monster, so we actually shared the Gaia. Anyway, I go into an Invisible Wire, and then I top deck into a no material, and no material is enough to make a lovely lady. We come off with two of them, and we get into the end of the game, take off a little D, and attack for the last one. And that is everybody in the dueling grounds. Six minutes in. Not too bad, not too bad. No deaths on the board. Uh, I will update that skull counter on the top with a really cool looking number uh, for the death encounters and we will get to that. So let's go ahead and get into this. We are now going to go ahead and face off versus both Seto and Jono. Remember if you, after you finish the regular dueling grounds you have to go to the festival. You're going to try to duel Seto but all of his cronies pull him away because for whatever reason Haishin needs him. And this is pretty much foreshadowing to dueling jo Jono and then immediately dueling the sage afterward. By the way, I'm going to try my best. I have not looked at a lot of the documentation, but I'm going to try my absolute best to try to compare it to Yu-Gi-Oh! For Forbidden Memories Vanilla so that we can actually baseline everything. Uh, Jono doesn't have a lot of good cards. I also want to take this motion notion to explain that there are no new effects added in Arranged. So, uh, I've talked to the developer a pretty good bit uh, he added stuff for funds. Anyway, he's got people running around everywhere because this flame servers is completely out of control. We are down to 1100. We are looking at a possible reset, but we do fuse. Sinister Serpent always comes back to my hand, and he fuses me into uh, Old Oddity in Inator, and then we have two lovely ladies on the next couple of turns get into a Yami, and we do pull this all the way back around with two lovely ladies and the monster that Sinister Serpent saved me. Sinister Serpent really did save me, so let's go against Seto. Thunder Dragon against, of course, High Priestess of Prophecy. Take out Seto pretty easily. It's very, very uneventful, so I just skipped the duel. Anyway, we go back to our room, and now you cannot trigger the Simon fight, so that actually invalidates one of the things that has happened. Also, I think it's kind of neat, the placement of Summon Skull, because it's pretty much just on everybody's head. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, that is ripped from Duel Links. I thought that would make a really cool Skull Death Encounter for using Summon Skull. So, for whatever reason, if we tell him where the Millennium Items are, he promises to spare the King and Queen. Except, don't trust them. They're, 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 no, no. So, we were given the Millennium Puzzle, we try to shatter it, and Haishin is like, nah, don't move, I got this. So we have to do battle with Haishin. I actually, funny enough... In, in Vanilla Forbidden Marys, I'm not sure how, but sometimes I've gotten RNG where I've fused into Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon and beaten him first try. However, this is completely uneventful because, yeah, we put a 3,000 beat stick on the field, but he has the gods, and there is just absolutely nothing. Like, Sasuke Samurai is, is just not going to be enough. Uh, he has Raw, Obelisk, and Slifer. They don't have any effects in this game, but they are 4,000 beat sticks. However... Keep in mind the 4,000 defense and offensive trait because it's going to be really, really cool. Also, triple fusing into summon sources is pretty cool even though it doesn't help me in this particular situation. It is pretty neat to see. Oh, there's that card I was talking about, Tierra, Source of All Darkness. That card is cool. Cool looking. It reminds me of Infernities. I actually never played Infer- not Infernities. Uh, it's the other remove from play archetype that I can't think of. I can't think of it right now. It, maybe it'll come to me sometime in this video. So we're going to go ahead and shatter the Millennium Puzzle. And as you guys know, if you play Yuga Forbidden Memories, once you shatter the puzzle, 
the other spirit, the alter you, Yami Yugi is basically you in another form, and regular Yugi is over here in this tournament, and we gotta go through these tournament battles. So, Yugi Forbidden Memories is really not that long of a game. I think a lot of people think it's a very, very long game and it takes a long time to play. However, it doesn't. Also, I want to take this opportunity to talk about a couple more playthroughs I'm currently doing. Um, and kind of shout out to those devs as well. There's a guy that uh, has all video game remix cards. I'm going to be playing through his playthrough. I'm going to be starting my playthrough very, very soon of another mod. Probably the one I'm the most interested to see eventually hit in that play, The Last Memories. Uh, I, tweet, I teased that on Twitter. I have not made a Twitter page for this YouTube channel, and I should have already done that. I thought it was a good thing to talk behind because this is pretty uneventful again. Uh, I don't have anything I can really do. I do put the Jurak in attack mode just in case he gets something crazy uh, while I'm waiting for my other pieces. I do have three spellcasters, but no fairies to combine with it to make into what I need. Hey, there was people running about, and now there's a United Resistance. That's crazy. And Dinko Seca. But still no fairies. But hey, Sinister Serpent is here, so we're good. We're good. So, I'm going to be playing through that, I'm going to be playing through the last memories, and I probably will do some more arranged playthroughs, because I actually want to go through the breakdown at some point too. The breakdown is pretty much like this, we're going to break, we're going to finish off our tournament, because the tournament grants us access to Pegasus. Once we finish the tournament, we actually need to fight Taya second, because Taya second, Jono second, and Pegasus is going to be our first grind, then we're going to go beat the two, two of the Meadow Mages, fully and then once we beat the two meadow mages we do the the mid the the middle of the playthrough the secret part of the middle playthrough but we need that middle part of the playthrough for labyrinth mage so that we could grind him for something as well and then we'll go on to the final six that's pretty much our game plan we only need about three or four duelists to grind and i am way way behind so anyway we've got a couple of we got one lovely lady on the board and we don't have anything but a whole handful of spell casters this happens a lot in this playthrough I imagine it's going to happen in the other playthroughs I do too, because all of the fusions require two different type of monsters. So you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like old Pokemon TCG when you used to combine types and have multiple types, multiple elements in a deck. So like if you had fire, water, and grass, you could never get the energy. This is kind of the same thing. You cannot draw into what you need. So I do have one of them, one of my lovely ladies up. I decided to go ahead and activate Yami and take up the Kiryu Shin. And I'm not drawing anything. Uh, I do go into a useless Kiminari attack, but it doesn't really help me here. And the problem here is he's not really making a lot of stuff to threaten me. But I'm not really doing anything in exchange either. I'm not drawing anything. But it is baiting out his other monsters to attack my defensive monsters, which is allowing my... High Priestess of Prophecy to do damage while I'm waiting for my other pieces. So I'm going to wiggle my finger in the air, activate Dark Pierce and Light, and see all of the cards that don't exist on the field. And hey, it works out because we draw into Shining Angel, which allows us to go into another High Priestess of Prophecy. Two attacks and one more, and Rex is down. Also, I'm very, very curious, for those of you that have played Forbidden Memories, what was your hardest fight in the regular tournament? Did you guys struggle with Kaiba and Millennium Shield and Blue Eyes White Dragon? I know I did. And I kind of struggled with Ishizu as well. That's what we're going to call her because I do not, even though I'm not monetized on this channel, I do not want to get this video taken down or blocked for censorship. So, a uh, little bit of deck editing. We don't get a whole lot that we can use. We do get another invisible wire, so that's kind of nice. I'm going to go ahead and add that. Invisible Wire is still good at this point in the game. We are at a point in the game where the monsters are low enough in attack that it does significantly matter if we're using Invisible Wire. So here is Weevil Underwood, and we start very nicely. We've got a High Priestess right off the bat, and uh, we got a second one right off the bat, so that works out cool. I believe you can actually go Spellcaster Fairy as well in the opposite order and still get a High Priestess of Prophecy. We get three ladies, three turns in a row, very, very uneventful, and Weevil is out of the picture on the next attack. So, that works out really, really nicely. We do not have another fair. We're going to throw a Sauce K Samurai on the field, which can attack and destroy defense position monsters in the real game, but not in Forbidden Memories. We get a Flying Kamikiri number one, and he loses. So, in between, guys, I'm trying to see if just we get anything that I can use. Uh, laser Cannon Armor I can't use. Uh, there's another No Material. I will add that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, taking out the Canyon. No Material is another Fairy. So, we're getting there where we're getting a more balanced 
I believe that's exactly what I'm going over here. Uh, trying to see how much of the balance of fairies and spellcasters. And we also got a hot engine. That might be my shining star later on. I'm not even going to lie. Might really, really need that later. So up against my Valentine now. Uh, my is not too bad in either arranged or regular. Uh, I think she's actually harder in Forbidden Memories. I have not seen her play Mountain or anything in the couple times that I've played through this game already. So that's a thing. I'm going to set an invisible wire and Eagle Eye has no chance of beating High Priestess of Prophecy. We do have Raigeki, but we might use that later. Uh, two, two fairies and a dragon. I could combine into Phantasmae just in defense or attack mode just to have something on board presence. Uh, Avatar of the Pot, this is not helpful. Although, Redox is really cool. That might be another really cool uh, uh, creature to play through with. I actually... Now, keep in mind, at this point, at this... The little bit that I have played this, I haven't looked over the documentation enough to know if Megamorph has actually been cut from the game. I only know a couple cut cards, and I think that's what differentiates things. However, we have two High Priestess of Prophecy on the field, and that's all we really need because we can attack this turn for 25, and then we can attack the next turn for 5,000 with a Raikeki for the win, and we can take him out right there. So... That's going to be the very, very last turn of my, as we decide, well, we don't go for a Raigeki, we go for a third lady. I guess they pretty much work simultaneously, because I either Raigeki and attack, or attack with all three ladies, and the game is over. Didi Crow is our win for the B, B rank. I lost. All right, so let's see if we got anything good from my. Probably not. I think Eagle Eye is probably one of the better things she drops. Let's see what we got here. Acid Rain. Now, what's, what's really funny about Acid Rain is my next opponent is actually Bandit Keith, which is kind of funny to actually pull Acid Rain directly off of my... I, I, again, for those of you just joining us, we are running a Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. Can I beat the game using only High Priestess of Prophecy? And additionally, I am using a 15-card drop that I do not have publicly available and was not provided by the original developer of this mod. If you want to play the version that is publicly provided, it is down below in the description. Alright, so we're starting pretty good. I did say that was going to be my Shining Star, and this is no avail. I put it with the Magician of Faith, and we've got our first High Priestess of Prophecy on the board. We don't have much else. We're going to set this top defense to see what it is. Giant Soldier of Steel. Okay, that makes me think the Giant Soldier of Stone has been cut. Also, I accidentally loaded a regular, a arranged save file on a regular for, uh, vanilla copy. And I noticed there was just card replacements. So I'm thinking he just replaced a lot of cards with better cards. Which is a really good idea because, let's face it, there's some of these cards that no one actually uses at all. Um, I have absolutely nothing. I have a bunch of monsters in defense mode that I can't use in any way. Oh, and there's Marshmallow. Hello. However, I mess up and throw it on the field in defense mode with no spellcaster. For some reason, I'm not sure how I manage that. But I do have an invisible wire protecting my marshmallow or dryad, whichever one. I do put a dryad. I keep calling that dryad, but I mean Doriato. It looks like dryad. I think it's dryad. Anyways, I've got two lovely ladies on the field. He attacks me with his own Lady of Faith. I do not have another spellcaster. I go for stop defense, which there was no point because he was in attack mode and I realized I could have finished him off that turn with that last High Priestess. But it works out cool because I get to play the Acid Rain that I actually just got the drop off of my, And our drop is Negate Attack. Not bad, not bad. Uh, Negate Attack actually does work in this game. Um, I would assume it would be cut for Fake Trap, because that's exactly what Fake Trap does, is it basically just negates the attack. So it's probably in place of Fake Trap. We didn't get anything good off of Bandit Key, Backup Secretary, Aqua Jet, <laughs> IP Mascarena. But we are going to be adding the Negate Attack to our deck, because I do feel like Negate Attack could come in handy at some point. It's just a good face down card. Eh, negating attack is always really well, even if you don't destroy monsters. Alright guys, so we're 18 minutes and thank you guys if you're just joining us. We are used, we are playing a Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories run with only High Priestess of Prophecy. We're going to go through the... What is it called? Flashback. There it is. I was trying to think of the word. I was thinking flashbang like Yu-Gi-Oh! like the card. Um, we're going to do the flashback as we touch the Millennium Key and meet our altar form, which is, of course, our actual main character. I found it very interesting when I first played Forbidden Memories that this was your actual main character. I, I always found that very interesting, and I'm not sure why. 
it was just a really cool concept. I think that's why I was always okay with playing Dark Magician in the main game, because Dark Magician pretty much beats over everything uh, to the point of Meadow Mage, and then you just use Meadow Mage to grind every other card. Alright, so up against Shoddy, and we got exactly what we need. Effect Veiler into Shining Angel. We make a High Priestess of Prophecy. I also believe Shoddy actually got increased power from the original game as opposed to this one. No, it's got 1850s. That's not too bad. Uh, we do have a Raigeki. We're not going to use that right now. We're looking to see if we can put that Doriato, not Dryad, with something useful and make another lovely lady. But instead, we just draw another Doriato, which doesn't help. So I put the Dark Dust Spirit in attack. Of course, I can't attack with it, but it is something, a body that can sit on the field. Oh, look, it's a handful of spellcasters that I can't use. I just draw my favorite card and digress in sad tears as I draw another cool card that I can't use, another Dolphin card. Funny story enough, I do have a Yu-Gi-Oh! 2008 deck based on that Dolphin card. Not that particular one, but the other one, I believe the Neospatian Aqua Dolphin. But I ran over myself. We did significant part of the final part of this game that had to get cut for length constraints. However, I do have it recorded as a separate video if you guys want to see some of the rejected fights and how many times I can die in a quicker motion. I'm sure you guys would enjoy the heck out of that. So, this is bad. This is a big daddy gores and I don't know if you guys know this, but my High Priestess of Prophecy cannot beat this card. It's a Saturn Guardian Star, which means I don't have the Guardian Star to beat it, which is Jupiter. And I have nothing that I can make on a Jupiter. So that is unfortunate, and I... But it's time to get right back on that horse, and let's go ahead and go into the rematch. Let's see if we can do better against Yami Bukura this time. God, that Gores came out of nowhere. Alright, so this is a decent start. We do start with High Priestess. So, let's explain how he wins. He fuses into Gores and he kind of just wins because even if I put Yami up, he can still beat me. But this time I have two lovely ladies on the field. I get over a Nightmare Phoenix as he plays a Caius. And I'm like, okay, so a Caius. So I need to play one of these that's on Sun so that I can overpower it and not into Venus. So what I need to do is throw away a bunch of cards and go into another one and play on Sun. And then I can just destroy his Caius. I try once again to bait him out by throwing my Sarasaurus in attack mode, and it doesn't work. So I make a Skull Knight, which would have been nice and would have been able to possibly beat Gores. No, not really, because I don't have the Guardian Stars for it. So this is getting nasty. He's got a Sword of Dark Destruction, and this is this is terrifying. Like, I can't even beat this even with a boosted High Priestess of Prophecy, because at this point I have, I have I've done no grind for no equipment. So I have, like, nothing to get into this with. 
I attack into the Bird of the Roses with a High Priestess, and he's got a 3,700 gores. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now it's a 3,700 gores after another equipment. Um, I have no card in my deck, Bar Raigeki, Dark Hole, something like that, that could get this threat off the field. He draws into Dark Bolter, and that's our second reset with Yami Bakura. And that is creepy. You have now brought my nightmares to fruition. But let's go ahead and go into game three with Yami Bakura. Third time's the charm, right? We destroy a Dark Balter the Terrible with a lovely lady. I put this one on Sun in case he does fuse into a Gores. He's at 45. I've got two lovely ladies on the field. I go for Stop Defense, which is almost as good as a Raigeki, and bring him down to 1100. His last monster is nothing. We Raigeki for the win, and we take him out. No more Yami Bakura, no more Creepy Smile. We absorb the Millennium Ring into our card, we make him free from the Millennium Ring, and we go back to deck editing. I apologize, I didn't actually realize that some of the footage got cut. I was actually adding the Dark Hole to my deck. Um, for some reason, I don't have the Yasuzu fight. I'm guessing because that is the particular name in which that could get the video taken down, so that's probably why I didn't record it, but it's very, very uneventful. However, I do record the fight with Pegasus next, and let me explain something. As long as Pegasus doesn't get his own High Priestess of Prophecy before you do, you're good. Um, he makes High Priestess of Prophecy, he'll usually actually just start with a Venus or a Sun. Uh, I think you actually have to stay on Sun to beat all of his moons. Uh, his Venus that's face down is, of course, a High Priestess of Prophecy. I don't believe he fuses into it. I believe he can actually just play it. I decide to go into Gizmek here, destroy his High Priestess of Prophecy, and we're going pretty well. I do get my second High Priestess here with no material and Doriato, not Dryad. have to keep reminding myself of that. Take out his Honest and can't attack him with the Gizmek. Almost ruined the entire challenge right there. That's crazy. Here comes a Yami, two lovely ladies on the field. We attack with two High Priestess of Prophecy. Only one gets through. And on the next turn after Gizmek goes down, which is the card we actually have to boost over, we attack and take out his High Priestess and knock him out with our own at 3k. And we get an unhappy girl. Uh, it's going to be a very, very important grind with Pegasus once we get done with the tournament. So after we take him out, we are at... Kaiba. And Kaiba is much easier as compared to basic yellow, uh, basic vanilla for, oh, Ishizu is here. I believe it's just an uneventful fight, and we went in like a couple of turns, so that's why I probably didn't see the footage when I was scrolling through the video track on Premiere. That's very, very interesting. We start pretty, pretty well. We do have a fairy and a spellcaster, and I do apologize for the footage here. I'm not exactly sure what happened. I actually have got to tell you guys, it is actually a lot harder to edit longer footage, only because not only do you have to make so many cuts in Premiere, but it's also really, really hard to zoom into specifics at a timeline, and it makes it a lot more difficult to break little pieces like this. Uh, they get a black ship of corn, you know, because that's a really good band. We had
going into the mid game with the mages. So let's go ahead and jump directly back into our game, back to where we started, and let's start taking on and knocking down the mages. All right, so we return to the game. We need to trigger the cutscene story to start the mages. Uh, we go over to King's Valley to Sedin, the ancient, I guess, ancestor or longtime ancestor of Shadi. He doesn't know where the Forbidden Ruins are because the game is certainly not going to tell us. That is a reference to a 80s, 90s email cartoon show if you're if you're wondering what that is. So we're going to go ahead and take out Mage Soldier once again. Very, very unforgettable. Nothing too much. He does have that stupid Galaxy Tomahawk, which can break over anything we play. We can't get over it, but we do have Raigeki and three lovely ladies. And two 25s and a 3,000, and we take him out no problem. His drops are as, as unforgettable as he is as a duelist. We search behind there, we pick up a papyrus, we take it back to King's Valley, and then we ask him to take us to the Forbidden Ruins, because we have to trigger the cutscene to get in there. We trigger the cutscene, and our first meta mage is going to be the Forest. Believe it or not, in this mod, in Arranged, the Forest Mage is actually one of the easier mages. Not necessarily the High Forest Mage, but the High Forest Mage also has a lot of good drops, too. This is a pretty decent start, as I believe a double-boosted High Priestess can't actually be beaten by any card that he has. He starts with a Uranus. We've got a Yami on the field, which is really cool, because that'll give us a 4k beater. We can just knock over his Desert Locust, which is one of his weaker cards. And we can make another Lovely Lady with an Air Knight Parshath and Injection Fairy Lily. Two of my favorite older cards from very close-related sets. We've got two of them on the field. We Yami here, 3,000 and 4,000, and we take him out. And our drop is a Sword of Dark Destruction. Hmm. I'm getting really bad deja vu moments from Sword of Dark Destruction. I wonder why that is. Oh, yeah! Because that Gores cost me two resets. And then Taya second cost me another reset. Her deck is much, much stronger in Arranged as well. So that's why she cost me a reset. So now we are up against the High Forest Mage, and we're not starting good at all. He does not Harpy Feather Duster or play a monster on the first turn. He just sets a defense. And that's pretty cool, except for the fact... Well, we could, we could, we could. We could combine Shining Angel and Doriato, or Air Knight and Doriato. And we do. And after Yami, we're at 35 beat stick. And I don't believe many of his cards can beat me without Forest. So we're in the clear. And we could make quite a few... Okay, so I did attack with something, but I didn't do any damage, so I don't know if that counts. But anyway, Super Robot is going to destroy Air Knight. He was long forgotten. It was almost like he had a face down. I thought he had a face down. That's probably why I did it. And High Priestess attacks and attacks again, 4,400. Uh, we've got a Uranus on the field. This is a really, really good situation. We could just make another third lady and take out his Grand Soul for some reason that he has and attack him with the other two. I also noticed in this game that the mages kind of share decks and stuff. Oh, Great Moth does the drop. Very, very nice. I don't think I've ever gotten a Great Moth drop from the Forest or High Forest Mage. So let's go and fight the Sea Shrine. The first Sea Guy is very underwhelming. Ha! <laughs> Hold Entity Hastor, the thing that has saved me two or three times with Sinister Serpent always returning to my hand to fuse into that card. Uh, we do get the Galaxy Tomahawk, which is kind of funny considering it is like a nice 3,000 defense. However, 3,000 defense is not necessarily near as good. I could see 4,000 defense becoming a really big thing, and we'll revisit that later. Anyway, I've got a Yami. He's got a Shark Fortress at 29. I'm trying to think, see if I can count right. This would reduce his attack down to 24, and then I would go up to 3,000 with an equipment. So I do make one and then defend with Injection Fairy Lily and just sit on my card. That's fine, though, because he makes a Hyper Ancient Megalodon thing, and I get an equipment out of it, so that's not bad. So that means I can go up to 3,500 and reduce him to 2,900, which means... I can basic math, and after a Book of Secret Arts plus a Yami on the Sun, I am at the 3,500, and there's nothing in the regular Sea Mages deck that can actually beat me. Except he plays another Umi. So that is a thing, because now 
I actually have to contend with this. So I decided to throw my Witch's Apprentice into defense mode or into attack mode, trying to get him to attack over Witch's Apprentice instead, and it works. He attacks with Amphibian Beast, which actually couldn't beat over me anyway, but the trick works. I take out the Amphibian Beast, and now he's sitting at 38. So I wonder what we can make. We can make another Lady and also sacrifice another Fairy, take out the Cyber Shark, but we can't because it's matched at 25. And we make our third High Priestess of Prophecy. I'm going to be saying that a lot. We take out the ugly looking seahorse, attack with two lovely ladies, and the sea mage is down. On to high sea mage segmenton. Okay, so this doesn't go well at all, and this is a reset. A 4,000 beat stick and a 26. I trust you've learned your lesson. Too bad it comes too late. All right, rematch with segmenton. I must be getting ahead of myself, though, because first we've got to deal with the Kyogre and the Hyper Shark. This is still the regular Sea Mage, and I'm thinking, okay, so I could go into High Priestess here with a Yami, which will make his card 29, but then he might magically get something over that. So I play a very risky play throwing my card in defense. He plays a Brachio Radius. For some reason, that's in your deck that has nothing to do with your type specialty. I guess it is a water card, but it's not an Aqua Monster. That's okay, though. I top deck into an equipment, and with Yami, that's a 4,000 beat stick lady. And I destroy your Brachio Radius so that because you are being punished for the uniformity of your deck. I draw into another Yami with an Elf Slight and another equipment, so I decided to just waste the Yami and make him waste another Umi. So that gives me a free turn to hit with a 35 and a 3000, and that is game. On to Segmenton round two. Hopefully this won't be a total washout. So Segmenton round two goes okay until he brings out his 4000 beat stick yet again. Uh, he doesn't have a face down card. I would dark hole, but I really, really don't want to get rid of my Yami. So I decide to make a different kind of play. I decide to activate the Yami and then go for Dark Hole, preserving my Yami on the field while still playing Dark Hole and getting rid of his monster. Because then if I top deck into equipments, I can easily get back in this game. This works out well. I'm at 447, and he fuses into not quite as dangerous a card of 28. This works out fanatically as I draw directly into an equipment that's a 1500 power boost, puts me at 4k, and not even his super powered. 4,000 beat stick Ghidorah wannabe sea monster can take me down at this point. So I attack. Mobius is weak as crap. I hit for 3,000. He's at 38. He sets a defense. I have yet a third lovely lady on the board. The third lovely lady takes out his oversized Megalodon super ancient mega shark. And we get a nightmare shark drop. So now we are in the, the part of the game where we go and save Taya. We finished off two high mages, so we went back to the dueling ground, which brought us to the labyrinth. Uh, you go to the labyrinth, you've got the labyrinth mage. We need him because we need to grind him for a regular high priestess of prophecy drop. He actually drops the actual monster card as opposed to having to fuse into it. So we're actually going to do that grind as soon as we finish him off. So we've got two lovely ladies on the board, and we draw into... A double fairy, which is Athena in defense mode. I'm looking at his life points, and I can just break Eki for the win. Attack with two lovely ladies, and that is the game. On to Seto second. And we get a crush card virus drop off of, off of Labyrinth Mage. That is freaking awesome. Crush card is going to be an amazing field clear both late game and also now, so keep that in mind. Uh, Seto second, this is not a good hand at all. We can get into a... 3,000, but I'm pretty sure he can get over that pretty easily. Let's see. He plays a sun. I draw my shining star, so that's kind of cool. I can get into a second High Priestess of Prophecy, and that is a Blue-Eyes White Dragon. He didn't want to match because usually the matched attacks, usually they defend and they don't match over the attack. But now Blue-Eyes is useless with my Yami, so now there's not a single card in his deck that can win. I make a mistake here going Angel... 07 into Magician of Faith, forgetting that High Priestess of Prophecy actually has 2,500 attack, so it doesn't actually fuse into that. So here's a Blaster, but that's fine. I take my two favorite cards. Just kidding. I take Witch's Apprentice and Air Knight. Once again, take out Blaster by 200 and attack with High Priestess, bringing him to 13. And then I draw into... 
I make a mistake here, didn't use my spellcaster instead do, do a double fairy, but two lovely ladies still finish off the game and shadow spell is our drop. Not bad. So, we have finished off our grind and we got our three High Priestess of Prophecy, a couple more crush cards, and a couple shadow spells. Not bad, not bad. Gonna go into the regular Meadow Mage. I just want to take this opportunity to say how much I hate Kapura. So let's compare Meadow Mage, because Meadow Mage is one of the best drop duelists in the original game, but also one of the best duelists to grind against. He has things like Snowdust Giant this time around. Normally his original deck, the best thing he could pull off was Gaia the Fierce Knight if he drew it. Now the best thing he can pull off is a 3300 Grand Soil. Uh, that's a big difference. So I make a... 3,000 beat stick, trying to determine what Guardian Star I want to put it on. I decide to go ahead and write Geki because the only thing he can out me with is another Grand Soul. Not even his Snow Dust Giant can beat me. And now I just top into another Elves Light and now it doesn't even matter. And he plays a Flame Cerberus. Like, of all the cards you could play, you play Flame Cerberus and whatever this Vulcan thing is. So he wastes another turn with another Sogan, and now I have the lovely lady to play. The card itself not having a fusion to it, and after a 35, we are facing Kapura. So Kapura is really, really tough in the main game as well. I was actually talking about the reg regular Meadow Mage. Regular Meadow Mage, Empress Judge, Judge Man, and Guy of the Fierce Knight if he plays it. I think Empress Judge and Judge Man are his best. This one plays Alkana Knight Joker at 4,000 on Meadow. Yeah, this is not good. Saturn Guardian Star is very, very, very unfortunate and very strong. Um, I need to draw into, like, I need a Destiny draw. Can I get one of those? I throw, I have two High Priestess of Prophecy. I activate Yami and defend with my High Priestess. See if I can draw on anything. He gets a Sogan and attacks over me. And this is a horrible hand. And you guys already guessed it. This is a reset. So let's go ahead and go back into Meadow Mage for the second time and see how much better we fare. You called me a foolish child. Actually, we're going to skip that one and go directly to the Desert Meadow Desert Mage. Let me go ahead and increment the counter for five. I feel like the Desert Mage is pretty much equivalently difficult as he is to Vanilla Forbidden Memories. He's not overly hard, he's not overly easy. However, that being said, Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories Arranged did boost all of the mages. Their difficulty is much stronger, the cards they play are a little bit higher than their regular difficulty. I believe in vanilla, most of the regular mages play like 23, 24, 25. However, in this game, most of them can play well over 25. The Millennium items are a source of mystic power, they will never be yours. Okay, we'll see. Oh, the Desert Shrine should be my final resting place? We didn't get anything off a of Meadow Mage that we could use, by the way. So that's why I kind of just skipped the whole deck editing sequence. This is a horrible hand. Uh, injection in defense mode. Let's see what you get. You get off... Oh, Eldritch. <laughs> this is funny considering I've played Eldritch in, in real life. Uh, this is a moon, though. So with Elves Light, I can easily get over it with sun boosted attack. So this is all good. Uh, this would be nice for Eternal Rest, by the way. You know that card that I was going to play against Yami Bakura, even though we didn't have zombies? You know that card. Uh, he has nothing but Moon, so we get over Eldritch again. We can't get over the first one because we don't have enough, quite enough attack, but we do get over it after the fact. Uh, Crush card, we just go for Shadow Spell because we could just get over it with any of our High Priestesses. And it also does a little bit more residual damage. I play another High Priestess, get over his... Thing that is from the Makayashi family that I don't remember what it's called as he plays Baguska. Uh, Baguska, we can get over. We do have two crush cards and a regeki, so we can beat him along with just one single lady. You know, usually we have two or three ladies on the field, but not tonight. She is running single tonight. Two crush card viruses later, two snipes, and down. Great man with the gold find is the drop. No, I cannot lose. Not like this. Martis. All right, on to Martis. This desert will be your grave. I mean, you're the one wearing the summon skull hat, not me. Uh, two high priestesses and a Yami, not too bad. We set Yami face down as long as he doesn't Harpy's Feather Duster. We get easily Yami into our other card uh, with high priestess. We actually fuse into high priestess, so we actually have the possibility to put four ladies on the field. Works out fine, though, because he played a Sakuretsu. He, he decided to go ahead and take out our Yami. I think we should have played that last turn. 
He probably would have played Desert anyway, but the whole play would have been mitigated either way. Uh, I hope this isn't Exod. I'm very scared that it is, so I play my card face down just in case. Exod would be 4,500 defense on Wasteland. That is nothing to scoff at. So, I'm going to go ahead and Raigeki because I believe that's Exod and I have nothing that could go above 45 to take it out without equipment. So, here comes another Uranus. I decide to attach another equipment to High Priestess. It's a Redox. Not quite as bad. So, I don't think... I don't think they actually use Exod. Now, keep in mind, I have not looked at the documentation that much. Black Tyranno goes down. He's at 1,500. We got two ladies on the field. Well, we had two ladies, and one of them got eaten by a big T-Rex. But a 4K beater brings him to 100 life over the Black Tyranno. I play a second lady, so we do have two ladies on the field. A weak Guardian Grawl later, and we take out Martis. That is three of the High Mages down in 46 minutes. That's not bad at all. Not bad. And we do have five resets on the board, though. So, I congratulate you. So, now we're going on to the Mountain. Mountain is also much stronger as well. I know I keep saying it. I do feel like all of the mages have their power boost, and it's definitely significant. I don't believe 2,500 is going to be enough to beat Stick over it, and I am correct as Tempest is played. We start really bad, and we're, we're, we get to a situation where this Mazda Union Kaiba, however you pronounce that, is a moon, so we attack over it with a sun-boosted High Priestess of Prophecy as he defends with a Pluto, which is probably would normally what I would be saying Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon. However, it's probably the other one. Oh, it's Zabor. Never mind. Zabor has, like, really, really low defense. He wastes his turn by playing a mountain, and we can easily just play into another Yami, but we also want to make another High Priestess of Prophecy. We attack for 55, and we bring him to 100, and we have a tremendous fire face down. And that is the end of the regular Mountain Mage as we get a Kiminari attack as our drop. So now we are on to a Tenza. It goes interestingly. Um, he makes a really, really big, beefy Meteor Black Dragon. We play a Dark Field. And we luckily have the power of Yami plus two equips, so we go up to 4,500, and we can get over, or sorry, 4,000, and we can get over Meteor Black just by 500. I do believe Meteor Black is the highest card the Mountain Mage Atenza can actually play. We do have a Shadow Spell set in case we need it. We knock over the Tomahawk this time, no shenanigans this time, and we play our second High Priestess of Prophecy, which gets over the defensive Dark Arm Dragon. We hit for 4,000, bringing him to 35. We can easily get over his last card if we play a third Lovely Lady hit with a 4,000 beat stick and three Lovely Ladies finishing and get a Black Rose Dragon drop. Back to Kapura, I believe. No, that was regular Meadow Mage. This time things go different with Kapura. Two Lovely Ladies on the board and a Bonfire Colossus and a couple Crush cards later. And we are finished with Kapura. So, there we go. That is finished. Thank goodness. I guess Alcana Knight Joker was not on the menu this time. So we actually finished off all the mages in just below 50 minutes. So I'm actually going to keep that up there. However, I'm going to stop incrementing the counter completely once we get to the final six. Which we are at. So now you're just going to get to stare at a five where I can just take it off completely and just let people wear summon skull. Let's go ahead and jump into the final six because this is going to be the wildest part of the commentary. So, Dark Knight, who is wearing a Summon Skull hat. I can't tell if he's Summon Skull or Dark Knight. The, your, your helmet got me a little confused. Actually got to Dark Knight on the very, very first try. On the very first try. And then this happened. So, now we have a bunch of... Resets. We start with two fairies against Neku. I don't think we've actually upgraded our deck much. However, there is a particular thing we can do in the final six. The final six drop Exod and Raigeki. Plus, we have a third crush card we can also add. So, in a way, we're kind of sideboarding. I attack with Air Knight because I knew that was a Sakuratsu armor, so that did not count of using a anything but a... High Priestess of Prophecy. Technically, High Priestess of Prophecy is the only thing that did damage, so it still counts. We play a 4,000 beat stick. I'm hoping that's not a widespread ruin, and it is. So guess what? This is going to be our first reset. <sighs> I have no equipments, 
Skull Knight can beat over High Priestess. If I swap to Venus to beat Skull Knight, then I lose to the Endymion. So I couldn't win either way there. So we're going to incur our first, second reset of the final six. He sets a card face down. We get into a High Priestess, but Sakuretsu Arm. You know, I have a feeling that I have exhausted all of the Sakuretsu Armors. And finally, we draw into a Doriato that we can't use, and he starts playing more monsters. He equips this thing with two Sword of Dark Destruction. Hey, that Deja Vu thing that I was talking about. That thing that I was talking about where this came back to haunt me. I have absolutely no card in my deck bar Raigeki that can help me here. And this is not the hand that I need, considering I have Swords of Revealing Light. I could crush card both cards and field clear, but I don't think it's going to be enough to set me up to a situation that I can get out of this. I'm at 750 life. However, that Air Knight can fuse into the Injection Fairy Lily that I have face down. And guess what? He doesn't have another trap card that can stop me. Skull Knight's in defense, and I draw two more equips. So I'm going all in for 4,500 with High Priestess. I really thought this was going to be a reset. But I have the next best thing to Raigeki, which is Crush Card Virus. 14,500 attack later. I'm sorry. 14,500 attack later and two lovely ladies. And we finish and come out of a 750 deficit to not have to reset. So now we're up against Neku. Uh, we're looking at our drops because once again I said like adding Exod and Crush Card is going to be the key. Exod and Raigekis are going to be the key. Also, God Cards off of Seto 3 is also really helpful because while I can't attack with them, their 4,000 defense is very, very important for guarding off anything that's not Raharakti from Nightmare, but it also allows me to take hits from God Cards. Two lovely ladies and a Hinokaga Sushi. He gets a really bad draw. He gets into a Psy frame. Some of his weaker cards... And we bring him down to 38. He doesn't have much of a response. We have another lovely lady we could put on the field. Also, I didn't have to really use Yami directly in the first three fights or four fights because Haishin's second up to Seto third automatically puts on Dark Field. However, not having Dark Field puts High Priestess of Prophecy at a deficit. However, three lovely ladies later and we take him out and get Zero the Man as a drop. What a nice drop. A drop that you would never see in vanilla. Let's fight Haishin Second. Haishin Second is really, really, really good. I say that because the biggest problem with Haishin Second is that he can play Tierra. And Tierra can be like 4,000, 4,500, something like that. It's pretty dangerous. We did not get any Exods, but we did get all the Raigeki. So we're going to add all those Raigeki to our deck and Gores. I don't know why we're going to add Gores. Gores isn't going to do us any good. However, we start really bad. Now, we can beat Tierra pretty decently as long as we're on the right Guardian Star of Sun. He t starts off with a Uranus. That tells me that's Exod immediately. I'm not interested in dealing with Exod because I can't get over 4,500 right now, but I could Shadow Spell it and get it down to a point that I could attack over it. However, I decide instead just to attack into a Sakuretsu armor. And he plays... Hey, there's that tier as Source of Destruction thing I was talking about. I Raigeki both of them. That takes out both Tierra and Exod in one shot. Gets to play another lovely lady, and there's another Exod, so we can't get any further. I'm assuming this to be another face-down Sakuretsu armor, so what I decide to do is attack over this with my 3,000 and use my 5,000 to get over Exod. He's only at 4,000, so we don't have a lot of damage left to go. I also noticed there's several times in this playthrough that I'm not attacking with my higher one first. Like in that case, how I would have done 3,500 points of damage and brought him down to a point. However, we Raigeki for the win. One lovely, well, two lovely ladies, but one takes the show with a 5,000 attack and finishes off Haishin second. Let's go to Seto third. Ridiculous! Defeated by this this child. All right, so now we're going into our set of third fights. I noticed also in the ending of this playthrough, I was not as click happy as I was in the beginning, so I apologize. I've never actually constructed a three-hour playthrough down into an hour twenty twenty-eight minute video, 
So this was the first, there's a first time for everything. And this was definitely the very first time I've ever done this. We didn't get too much off of him. We did actually get a Tierra. So we can add Tierra to our deck because it's a 4,000 beat stick on Darkfield. And on Darkfield, we're able to guard off against gods with a 4,100 defense on Darkfield, which is actually pretty important as well, as you're going to see later on in the playthrough. I decided to cut one Shadow Spell. I haven't felt like both of them have been very necessary. And Shadow Third is, I would say, weaker. But he's not necessarily weaker. He's just not as trigger happy with, say, Blue Eyes Ultimate. Uh, he still has all of the gods. I attack over with Gores because I knew for a fact I could handle it. And this is bad because now he plays Blue Eyes Ultimate with 5k. And the only out that I have to this is like Regeki Dark Hole Crush card. I was really hoping to play Tierra. And to guard off his gods, but he does play the Blue Eyes Ultimate. This is actually the first time I've seen him play Blue Eyes Ultimate in the few times I've played against him. I'm very, very concerned this is going to lead to another reset since there's a 5,500 Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon on the field. However, I have Swords and Raigeki. I would also like to understand how I have topped into Swords way, way more times. Considering Swords is only one copy that I'm running, and yet in most of the most important duels, I have gotten it every single time. So he decides to boost that thing even further for some reason into 6,000. So he definitely has the ability to beat over God cards. But I have a 4,000 beat stick High Priestess on the field, and I have a Raigeki in my hand. So I am sitting quite pretty, hoping that that is nothing face down. Maybe it will be, maybe it won't. I can send out another High Priestess at 3,000. It is nothing. He throws Meteor Black in defense, and he's at 4,000. We are making headway. He plays Evita, and Evita is something I can easily get over as long as I have a couple of boosts, which I do. So I attack over Evita and finish it off with... Oh, I'm sorry. I bring him out down to 500. I didn't have a tremendous fire face down. He takes me out with a Star Eater, and I just Shadow Spell him or Crush Card him. I couldn't decide which way I wanted to finish him. I go with Shadow Spell and knock out his Star Eater. I get a Star Eater as the drop, funny enough. And Seto Third is down. So now we get the sequence of Haishin where he is holding him captive, and Dark Knight is summoned. So let's talk about Dark Knight. I have to commend Zeta Phoenix. Because Dark Knight and Nightmare are literally... Nightmare is an absolute nightmare. And Dark Knight is pretty tough as well. This entire sequence throughout the beginning of the game has always been funny to me. How he gets thrown into a fire. And there's really nothing else he can do. So, let's fight against Dark Knight. We did get an Obelisk the Tormentor. And I noticed we also got a Winged Dragon of Raw. So we need to add both of those to our deck. So that we have something to defend against his gods. And we have defensive monsters to play against. Now that we have our own copies of... Excuse me. Now our own copies of High Priestess of Prophecy. We're able to add those couple of cards to our deck. And let's get started. This is a horrible hand. But we do top out into swords on the first turn. So that is really, really important. And in equipment. Uh, he leads with a face down. I draw into Raigeki. So that's pretty nice. Raigeki is always for the win. If we've learned anything from the Great Jono. We play High Priestess with one equipment at 3,000. We've also taken out the Yamis, so that's also really important as well. We can almost get over a Slifer. I'm at 4,000. He plays a face down card. I just crush card Virus, and hopefully his card isn't going to be much. He plays Sophia. Sophia can actually get over us, so we have to play our High Priestess on Sun that we can beat Sophia. Sophia is also weakened by 500. Thanks to the fact of Yami, which I actually added back to the deck. There were so many playthroughs with this, which I actually took it out. And I regretted it every single time. Because I was never actually able to beat over things without Yami in the deck. It required too many extra equipments for <clears throat> High Priestess. But it also enabled me to do like how I did with uh, beat bringing Sophia down to a range that I could take it out. He uh, summons Slifer of the Sky Dragon at 5,000, and that's a reset. Um, if you couldn't tell, I definitely could not beat that. There is a point 
in which I got to which I was using save states. After about 25 attempts, I got to the point of using save states. Our rules state no save states until the final six, and that's exactly what we're doing. Once again, the obelisk and the raw is something we, you know, got off set of third, so we add it to our deck each time. You'll notice that each time that I added it back into my deck right before fighting Dark Knight. I think we add a Vita as well. No, we didn't add a Vita. I couldn't remember if we did or not. Uh, this hand is not much better. Yeah, it gets into a High Priestess, but it ends on crap. No equipments, no swords, no nothing, and there's a Slifer staring me down. And I have no Exods, I have nothing to defend myself. There's been, in that 20 count reset of all the various other other the final six i did get exod regeki and all of those things however i did not draw them at the pertinent time in order to defend against god cards so that was very very important and a big deal if he plays obelisk i can get over it so he plays amaratsu at 3500 amaratsu is one of his weaker monsters that i can actually get over i don't have the right guardian star though but, guess what? He top decks into another equipment and then gets over my High Priestess of Prophecy. I would say this was a reset, but we do have a Swords of Revealing Light as our saving grace. I think we have a Rage Yeah, we have two Raigekis as well. So we Raigeki, clear the field as he plays a Sun. We Yami the board. So now we just need a couple equipment so that we can get over stuff. However, he plays a Slifer at 4,500. However, we have an Obelisk at 4,500 that we can defend with thanks to the Dark Field that I added back to the deck. And because I didn't play it on Moon, we can actually beat over it, so I thought, or sit against it. But then he top decks a Shadow Spell, which is very, very unfortunate. 45, I think I can match. That's 3,000, that's 4,000. We're still a couple shy. So I decided to ride Geki and pray he doesn't draw something, anything. He draws into a face down, and I'm like, okay. So if he doesn't draw into a god, I win. Well, actually, even if he draws into a god, he just can't draw into an equipment on that god. He has his own Raigeki and Sophia. Sophia is strong. Sophia is very strong. However, Sophia cannot beat over the Winged Dragon of Raw, or so I thought. He plays a Shadow Spell... And then I play tier as Source of Destruction in Defense Mode. And he Raigeki's anyway. And takes me out with a reset. Dark Knight is such a weird, weird fight. Because there's either Raigeki's, Shadow Spells, or God Cards. Or all three. Uh, I think that's what makes him tougher than Seto Third is the way that he plays his cards. If I were to compare him in Vanilla, he's actually a really easy boss in Dark Duel Stories and Vanilla Forbidden Memories. However, here, they've both been increased, and we haven't even gotten the Nightmare yet. If you guys are interested to see all of those reject playthroughs for the final six, leave, leave it in the comment section down below, and I'll more than consider uploading it as a, another video. Maybe I can, like say that the final six is an absolute nightmare or something like that i'll come up with some kind of catchy video title at that point anyway i open with swords and yami which is a really good opening for me and i have four thousand uh but i also i would have four thousand but i decided to make two thirty five hundreds instead i guess because i can shadow spell his slifer down and then it will be able to i won't be able to beat over it'll, it'll only be at four thousand so, Tierra can defend against it. Raigeki would be really nice. I feel like every single time that I'm wanting Shadow Spell, I'm wanting Raigeki or Crush Card. Because I did not set it on Moon and it's in the Mars defense position, I would think Tierra would be able to stand up, but there was a Shadow Spell. Luckily, I top deck into a Raigeki. Raigeki for the win, not quite because I didn't get to really do anything with it. But instead, I was able to take a slide for the Sky Dragon, so I guess that is beneficial in and of itself. I decided to waste a couple of cards since I have Tierra, and he finally attacks over Tierra with his Sophia. But Sophia is easily beatable, because I can put my card on the Sun and power over Sophia just by about a thousand. I actually put it on Venus... I apologize. I put it on the right Guardian Star this time as he takes out my little puppy. That's fine, though. Uh, I have him at 6,500. 
I play my other one on Venus, go over the top of him, and attack him for 3,000, bring him to 2,500. He top decks into a Mars, we ride Geki for the win, and two lovely ladies bring us to Nightmare. Oh boy, an hour and six minutes and an hour and 28 minutes. That means there's 20 plus minutes of Nightmare, which gets bonus on Yami. And Slifer, Raharakti, you guys see where this is going, that's a reset. Also, I'm curious if you guys kept up with all the resets that I didn't count. So the ones that have been from Dark Knight, Seto 3rd, the Dark Knight at the beginning of the final six. Leave it in the comment section below how many resets overall you think this took. I'm interested to see what you guys come up with with a number. You can even leave two numbers if you want. One for this video and how many rejected resets there are. And if you guys want to see that in a separate video, I'd be more than happy to commentate that and make it a video. Anyways, Tierra with a power up. That's a 4,500 that I can't beat. Since I'm only 3,000, that's 35, that's 4,000, so I'm shy of 500 attack. I defend with a High Priestess. He summons... Oh, look, Obelisk on 45. You know, this Yami thing is starting to bite me right in the face. With Nightmare. Specifically, like, Dark Knight played Sophia and a couple other cards that were strong and the God cards. However, he never got Obelisk on Dark Field. But Nightmare is getting everything right. Raharakti, Obelisk, Darkfield, you know, all of the pleasantries. So this hand is also crap. Um, I play Darkfield, and he starts with Obelisk at 45, which I can't touch. So that's a reset. I throw away a bunch of cards, and he attacks me with Slifer, and he attacks me with Obelisk. Reset again. I feel like we're back in the regular Nintendo days, and I'm just pressing the reset button on the console over and over again, which technically I am just with save states. Because I've noticed Pokemon players that do Nuzlocks, that do resets, reset with a save state. So I thought this was pretty much the same thing. This hand is slightly bit better um, until he gets Raharakti and just wins. But other than that, there's a couple of scenarios that are good. Uh, this is not one of them. Obelisk comes on the field. 4,500 overpowering my Injection Fairy Lily. High Priestess into Air Knight. This isn't really helping me at all. Obelisk comes to the field. A face down card. I wonder if that's an equipment or an actual trap card. I could Raigeki, but I don't think it's really that worth it. But I decide to do it anyway. After all, I just want this nightmare to be over with. I play two fairies to ditch two cards instead of defense monster, plus just see if he's going to draw another monster. No surprise, he does. Wing Dragon are raw. So, there's no point. High Priestess of Prophecy can't beat either one of these cards I defend. He summons another monster, being probably an obelisk. There's a raw, and there's an obelisk. And there's a defense monster in Uranus, which is going to be an exod. I go for Raigeki. And he pays me back with an Elves Light boosted raw. So that's a 4,500 beater that I can't beat. And another reset. I'm kind of wondering how I could optimize this playthrough. So also leave that in the comment section down below. One hour and 11 minutes. We are almost done with this oppressive nightmare. That's a perfect word for you. I ditch two fairies, throw my shining star in defense mode and hope for the best. And it's an exod. So, I guess I can't complain too much. Also, I apologize for the little scratches in between. I'm not sure what's going on with that. I've noticed a couple microphone issues between OBS, but also after the fact in the recording with Premiere. So, I do apologize for that as well. And hopefully, we'll be able to get that fixed on the next playthrough. However, my next playthrough will actually probably be in parts with the last memories. But I'll also be playing through another video game mod version of Forbidden Memories that I was given a couple days ago. I do have a couple of the cards that can actually win this. However, the only thing I can do is boost over Obelisk. But I did Shadow Spell the Slifer so that I can beat the Obelisk with the Guardian Star and then Raigeki the remaining two cards. Once again, 
If I had Shadow Spell, I think I'd rather have Regeki. Uh, it's working out better, though, because he goes into a second Exod, and this, this is very, very good, except for the fact I can't get over it. But I do go ahead and destroy the Sakura 2 armor that's face down while leaving mine intact, but unfortunately he top decks the Winged Dragon of Raw, which I needed to be on a different Guardian star to beat. I throw away three angels. into Yami, and he not draw Obelisk, if he draws either Slifer, Tierra, no, it really has to be Slifer or Raw, then my Tierra can defend against his other gods, however it cannot beat Obelisk. There's three monsters on the field and I don't want him to tribute that for a god card, so I just tried to decide to go with a Raigeki and leave him with just a Winged Dragon of Raw, which is exactly what that card is. I decided to throw away four cards and I'm hoping on this next turn that I draw into a Yami because Tierra can then guard off against that. But that unfortunately is an Obelisk the Tormentor on Moon. So that is not going to be something I'm going to be able to play Yami. I do not draw any equipments. I decide to play Yami anyway even though a 45 and a 4000 just take fans. So that's a reset. <sighs> you know, Yami wasn't necessary at the beginning. 
than it was necessary in the middle of these games. And now I wish it would just go die in a fire, because it boosts way too many of his final cards for me to make good use of it. Alright, we slowed down the game. Can we please, 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 get some good RNG of some kind? High Priestess in attack mode. Why I put it in attack mode? I don't know yet. Raharakti. This is not good RNG. This is not what I'm talking about. However, Raharakti doesn't necessarily spell Doom because I have three Crush Card Viruses plus Bright Gekis, so I do have a way to out all of these cards. What's hilarious is the two sons, he actually played two Raharakti in this duel, and then he plays a third one. So that is very unfortunate. Maybe that's a slight for the Sky Dragon. That would be nice. I would prefer that. I decided to make a High Priestess in defense mode, and this Swords of Revealing Light is really not panning out very well at all. He top decks into the Wing of Dragon of Ra, and I ride Geki and take out two gods. Or the second and third Raharakti plus the Wing Dragon of Ra. He draws into Exod. Exod is not that good in this situation. I toss two cards to make another High Priestess in defense mode. He doesn't have any face down cards. I decide to leave my cards in attack mode. This turns out to be a mistake. He tops into Sly for the Sky Dragon, and now I'm at 4,000. I could crush card Virus. The problem is, is it's not going to destroy Exot. So I instead decide to play two ladies in defense mode and pass. He gets a face down card, which is not an equipment, but it's probably a widespread ruin. The draws are not good at all. I need something to ward off Sly for the Sky Dragon. I decide not to worry about Yami and throw away Tierra plus the other High Priestess fusion. So now I'll get three or four cards on my next draw phase, which is really important because Slifer and Raw destroy my last two defensive High Priestess of Prophecy. Now Crush Card is useful because it destroys both Raw and Slifer. So now the question is, does he top deck into a god? Nope! He top decks into Exod. And Exod can be beaten. I d defend with Witch's Apprentice, hoping for another equipment, because that with Shadow Spell would be really nice. This is probably Obelisk. It is Tierra. But Tierra is a card that I can actually beat. I decide to Raigeki both Exods and the Tierra. Man, I'm down to 19 cards. He fuses into Ultimate Tyranno, a Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, a card I can actually physically beat with two equipments and match off at 3,500. My thing is if I go for Crush Card and he draws a monster, then I'm screwed. If he draws into Exod, then I'm good. I decide to put it on the Venus, and I decide to pass. There's a face down card, and he top decks into an Obelisk. So that's another reset. There's been way too many close fights with Nightmare that I feel like shouldn't have had to become resets, but bad RNG has dictated that. And a lot of them I've had to throw away a lot of cards still not to get good RNG or to get out of situations. It reminds me of Seto 3rd from the base game, and also to an extent Nightmare from the base game, even though Nightmare's not near as hard. But definitely Seto 3rd, because Seto 3rd follows a very similar pattern of Blue Eyes Ult, Blue Eyes Ult, or Blue Eyes Ult Gate Guardian, or Blue Eyes Ult Black Skull, Blue Eyes Ult Gate Guardian, Blue as all, blue as all, so on and so forth. Uh, Exod is the start and an Endemion. I have one equipment, one crush card. I decide to make a very, I almost decide to make a strange play and I almost decide to boost Endemion, but I felt like that wasn't really necessary.
or Slifer, then I can defend against it. As long as he doesn't top deck into anything that I can't beat over, I decide to play it on Mars. If he top decks Obelisk or Raharakti, I am absolutely screwed. He does not. He top decks Exod and Slifer. So now I'm pitching away cards. I decide to pitch away two because I really want to save the Crush Card Virus and also the Raigeki. I set it in defense mode as he plays out what I was hoping not to be. Ah, it's a raw, it's a slifer. So because that's another slifer, I crush card both of those. Both of those go away. Tierra is sitting nicely in defense as Exod, and here comes the obelisk. I knew he was going to draw it at some point for the shadow spell, but definitely sooner rather than later. I actually decide to play Witch's Apprentice in defense mode off of the pitch off of these two cards as he now draws out the Winged Dragon of Ra. And that's another reset. I lied. Thousands of tears later and breaking down emotionally from all of these earned summon skulls that I have gotten, we are what I hope to be in the last fight versus Nightmare. And to end off this amazing, amazing game, I want to talk about competitive stuff in another video because I definitely don't want to bore you with it. And I also don't want to confuse people because I do know challenge runs are a big thing on Forbidden Memories. Alright, so Nightmare first turn, I decide to go with a Yami because I know as long as I can get a boosted High Priestess, I can beat over most of his cards. Swords is like the best thing I could top deck into. Because I can beat Tierra with the Crush card, I just need, really, really need some equipment so he decides to throw it in defense mode. I don't know if he's actually playing Exod or just the Tierra. So, that's an interesting thought. Exod, of course, doesn't have to worry about that. Oh, it's not Exod, it's, it's a god. So here comes my Charlie's Angels again. They are back. I knew they would be here. I decided to throw away four cards because I could easily just make a crush card out of the last set of them. And he's got one more turn of swords. So I decide that I can't get over anything on his team or on his, on his field. He has one more turn and I can crush card or regeki literally his entire field. And it feels so good to get rid of all of that and hit him for 7,000 while still being on the last turn of Swords of Revealing Light, after all of the trauma and trouble this man has caused me. He does draw into Exod, and we can just Raigeki for the win and finish off the game. Some thoughts as I close. I think I could optimize this a bit more. I didn't really know how to do this playthrough because I've actually never taken a long playthrough like this and broken it down into an hour and 28 minutes as the original video was three hours and 13 minutes so i did the very very best i could i hope you guys have enjoyed thank you so much again zeta phoenix for showing me this game if you guys want to play the public version the link is down below in the description please don't leave me comments or anything asking how i got my version i will not be sharing it just download the public version in the description because zeta phoenix deserves to get credit for it and the person that i got this from did not give credit to him Thank you guys so much for watching with an extra special thanks to the Yu-Gi-Oh! community that I've become accustomed to, the 2008-2006 Yu-Gi-Oh! Wi-Fi community. I've got some really, really cool things in store, and I'll see you guys on the next run for The Last Memories, or also the video game run. I'll see you guys soon. Take care, and have a good one.